So once again, um, my name is Jesus Padilla. I am the program manager of the Florida SPDC at FIU. I just wanna thank you for attending today's uh, webinar. Um, in addition, um, the, the, the SPDC and the Penal Global Entrepreneurship Center, um, it's, it's working hand in hand um, to promoting um, this exciting um, competition. It's called the Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition, which has been formerly known as the Business Plan Challenge. Um, it has been a signature uh, program for the Pino Center. And uh, since 2010, the Pino Center uh, staff has coordinated the, um, the FIU track, which is designed a, a, a platform for all FIU students, alumni, and faculty and staff to showcase new ideas while providing a forum to attract investment uh, for their business models. Uh, the business models must prove itself to have a sustainable and as well as demonstrate that it possesses and can acquire the resources to actually launch and be viable. So this is a great opportunity um, for, you and for everyone in attendance. Um, that this could be a good opportunity for you to participate in this year's competition um, as they will be able to enhance that, um, that business model, the business venture from having it to the, to the idea to actually in paper at the same time. Um, with, the, um, with the Miami Herald Startup Pitch Competition, there's three different tracks. Um, there's the FIU track, which we'll be discussing right now, along with the, um, the community track and also the high school track as well. Um, so for starters, for the FIU track, it will be for our current FIU students, alumni, faculty, and staff. It's open for all colleges. So it could be if you're in the College of Business towards the School of Hospitality Tourism Management to the School of Law to the uh, College of Engineering. So the, the sky's the limit for it's open for all FIU colleges and schools. Um, and then obviously if oftentimes businesses is not one person operation, it could be a multiple team effort. Um, at least one of the members uh, must be a current FIU student, alumni or, or staff, um, and you'll be able to be participating under the FIU track as well. As such, um, it will be currently living in South Florida. It's a for-profit business. And also um, any established businesses um, must be in operation um, of three years or less. So any businesses after January 1st, 2018. In addition to the community track, it's uh, similar towards the FIU track. Um, it will consist of um, a pitch deck format of 12 to 20 slides. Um, and at the same token, it will be any businesses after January 1st. They will be currently living in South Florida. So it will be from Palm Beach, Broward, Miami-Dade, and Monroe counties. And, um, and I strongly encourage you to visit the Miami Herald website, which is miamiherald.com forward slash challenge for additional information, um, some additional guidelines and rules for you to uh, participate in this exciting challenge. Now for your high school age uh, student um, children, or colleagues that, that are in the high school track that are really um, entrepreneurial mindset, this is a good opportunity for them to participate in, um, in this year's uh, challenge. Uh, we strongly encourage the students to visit their uh, network for teaching um, entrepreneurship program at their respective schools for additional information because uh, it will be different um, uh, slides that they will need to incorporate in the competition. And then um, the the key takeaway is that the deadline for all submissions is um, March 2nd. So it's pretty much uh, right around the corner. And the uh, deadline is at 11.59, as the winners will be announced in May. In addition, um, not only from the Miami Herald website, um, we strongly encourage you to visit the, um, the, business, uh, the FIU College of Business uh, website for additional information, which is business.fiu.edu forward slash startup pitch. In addition, um, the, um, the, the presentation um, will be emailed to you um, in regards of uh, today's uh, topic of Step Up Your Startup. It's an exciting um, webinar um, for, to enhance your business growth. Um, in addition, um, more information about the Florida SPDC at FIU, we provide a no-cost business consulting um, for you as such um, how to start your business, how to launch it, um, um, biz uh, business planning, access to capital, government contracting, HR assistance, strategic and operations management. So it's all the faucets of what small business entails. We have specialized business consultants that can assist you as our center um, covers Miami-Dade and Monroe County, as the services are confidential and no cost to you. Now, if you're located outside the respective region of Miami-Dade and Monroe County, that's not a problem. Um, feel free to email myself or to Brianna 
as I will be more than happy to connect you with our colleagues from our uh, respected regions that will do a, a virtual introduction and like that you'll, you'll also get the, um, the same um, assistance and services that we'll, as our center will be able to assist you with. Um, you're, you're, you're in a great um, webinar as uh, one of our great colleagues and presenters today is George Ray III, as uh, he will be going over uh, today's um, webinar. And by all means, if there's any questions um, throughout, the, throughout the webinar, by all means, I strongly encourage you to, to ask those questions in the Q&A option. Um, as we'll, um, throughout the webinar, we'll be able to respond to the questions and, and we'll, we're, we're here to assist you and, and, um, and, and take your business venture to the next level. Without further ado, I would like to, you, um, to introduce to you, uh, George Ray III. Thank you so much, Jesus. Uh, I'll go ahead and share my screen now. Uh, thanks for the warm introduction. Uh, <clears throat> give me just a second. I have my presentation up. And now I need to share screen. And uh, are you able to see my screen? Hello? Yes, yes, George. You're able to see it? Okay, excellent. Okay. All right, so uh, as Hazu said, my name is George Ray and I'm a business consultant with SBDC. I'm happy to bring this presentation to you. Uh, thank you to our sponsors. And uh, looking forward to sharing with you uh, all relevant information that can assist you with jumpstarting your business. We uh, at SPDC offer a great service, so I encourage you to uh, take advantage of our um, individual one-on-one -on -one consulting service. We enjoy uh, helping businesses grow and succeed. Uh, this is some brief information about myself. Uh, my specialty with the center is franchising. Uh, I am a startup consultant. I've been with the center for uh, seven years. And I'm also a business professor and entrepreneur. So that's a little bit about myself there. Um, and we'll move on to our, uh, our next slide here. So um, the SBDC network is funded largely in part by the SBA, the Small Business Administration. Um, and this is our network here across Florida. As you can see, the SBDC has a vast network across the state. And um, our mission and our goal is to, uh, to help businesses grow. We have a lot of different resources and we try to help guide you in the right direction to make informative decisions uh, to you know, have successful outcomes with your business. So this presentation is designed to give you general information regarding uh, the startup process for businesses, particularly small businesses here in Miami. Um, so one-on-one -on -one business consulting, that's the uh, services that we offer. Uh, I won't go too much into that again because I think Jesus kind of elaborated on that. We'll hop right into our presentation. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to uh, to post those questions on the message board and those questions will be relayed back to me. Um, give me just a second um, before I start the presentation. I need to get... All right. Then, uh, in addition, um, afterwards, um, we we'll, I will be sending you an email if there's any particular questions or concerns um, that we did not go over the Q and A session, and also in the chat option, I have uh, provided you my my email. So, if there's any additional questions or any relevant or other questions, you know, A to Z, um, don't hesitate to send me an email. I'm always available. I'm here to assist you. Um, in addition, um, I have provided you the link so you could go ahead and register. Um, to meet with George or any other business specialist in the areas of assistance that you're seeking. Um, and then at the same token, uh, okay. we'll go over throughout the presentation for any additional Q&As, but I will be in communicating with you um, if there's a particular question that I could assist you with, or if not, George will be able to do so. Thank you so much, Jesus. So <clears throat> we're going to hop right into our presentation. Um, and here we go. So we're off to the races. Let's see, here's my screen. I need to like share it again with you. Okay, all right, I'm not really sure how that's gonna work. All right. Okay, can you see my screen? All right, there it is. All right, so um, step into your startup. So uh, step into your startup. Um, what is entrepreneurship? So let's talk about entrepreneurship. Uh, really, it's assuming risk 
And uh, you want to assume risks that are manageable, calculated risks, not just of absorbent risk. I don't want you to just quit your job today and try to start a business overnight. You need to plan. So we'll talk more about uh, risk and risk taking. Um, but with risk, there is reward. So um, entrepreneurship is a um, very rewarding track in terms of a way to earn money and create flexibility and design a lifestyle you really want to live. Um, <clears throat> like I said, there's a lot of risk in entrepreneurship. I'm an entrepreneur myself. I've had good days. I've had bad days, but I've had more good days than bad days. It's not for everybody. 70% um, of businesses, particularly startups, they fail. And 97% um, of people, they work for someone. So um, there's a lot of intestinal fortitude required um, to really be a business owner. You have to be able to weather uncertainty. There's a lot of challenges. And uh, really, you fail your way to the top, in my opinion. Um, so let's look at Tommy Hilfiger. Um, they were, he was one of the people who initially failed uh, in his business. But thanks to, I think, Snoop Dogg on Jay Leno, uh, it relaunched his uh, brand. Um, and thanks to hip hop, um, Hershey Chocolate. Could you imagine if he gave up? Um, look at the tremendous impact Hershey Chocolate has had um, on confectionery across our country and our world, uh, particularly with Valentine's Day just passing. Um, and we look at Heinz ketchup. Um, you can't have a hamburger or a hot dog without ketchup. Walt Disney, um, his plan was so big that it was scary. But look at um, how it panned out for him. Look at all of the expansions, the theme parks, the merchandise, the movies, the cruise ships, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all examples of um, people who've had to fail their way to the top, all right? You will have to stand on a pile of no's and failures to get to that one yes, to get to that one um, streak of success. And that's really all you need to propel yourself um, in entrepreneurship. So if you failed before, or if you fail in this particular venture, don't be discouraged. Um, there's still an opportunity to uh, rebound. I think entrepreneurship is really understanding how to weather uncertainty, how to respond to adversity, and um, really having you know business and emotional intelligence, really having a plan as well, really helps you weather uncertainty. Uh, if you go into a tall building, you notice they have fire plans. How to evacuate these tall buildings. So um, in chaotic environments with uncertainty, you need a plan to help you manage your risk exposure and to build confidence in exactly how to pivot or to get back to where you need to be. So um, why take uh, these risks? Entrepreneurs launch businesses for many reasons, opportunity, profit, independence, um, for challenges, looking to solve problems, complex problems, simple problems, uh, find a void and fill it um, is one of the traditional rules uh, that, you know, we kind of live by. Give me a second here and bring this down. Um, what does it take to be a successful entrepreneur? So I'll tell you, uh, it really does take self-direction. You have to be self-nurturing, self-guiding. You have to be a self-starter, all right? You have to take the initiative. Um, nobody's going to pat you on the back. There's no blueprint to success when it, be, when it comes to entrepreneurship. Essentially, uh, it's a trial and error, fail your way to the top kind of thing. And um, having a plan will help you weather uncertainty, having a certain level of experience, a certain level of uh, research and understanding of the industry can build confidence and also help you uh, reduce your risk exposure and, and manage um, the uncertainty a lot better. So there's a, a huge tolerance of uncertainty when it comes to business. And really, in order to start a business, like when I started my business, um, there's a certain level of momentum you know, that has to go into you being coming successful, you being able to acquire clients and things of that nature. It's not going to happen overnight. Most people can't start a business because they can't weather uncertainty. Um, they're um, scared about the risk factors involved with the uncertainty, particularly financially. Um, so it's not for everybody. In addition to that, um, I think that you know most people are looking for structure. The more, more educated we become, the more structure we want. So the less uncertainty we really want to have in our life. And really being an entrepreneur is dealing with uncertainty and managing that accordingly. So most people after about six months or a year, 
they can't take it anymore, okay? They wanna go back to that nine to five, that certainty of how they're gonna pay their bills and how they're gonna, you know, make it survive. And, um, you know, essentially that, that kind of uh, is what causes most businesses to fail. Also under capitalization, I'm not sure what just happened, but I have to re-engage my screen share. Okay, let's see if that works. Give me just a second. Let's stop the share. And I will start the share again. Okay, hopefully this um this puts us back to where we should have been. All right. So where to learn about entrepreneurship? So learn from others. Investigate your local colleges, uh, small business uh, entrepreneurship talk, um, read up on entrepreneurship, the SVDC. We have skilled um, and very highly specialized and experienced business consultants who can provide you expert one-on-one -on -one advice. Um, you don't have to learn from your own mistakes. You can actually study business models, um, and talk to expert consultants to figure out how to reduce your risk exposure. I think um, part of being a successful entrepreneur is understanding how to manage risk um, versus um, that risk for reward. So get some experience. A lot of people think that, okay, I'm gonna start a business today and I'll be a millionaire tomorrow. Um, it's just simply not like that in most cases. I mean, there are some anomalies, but uh, it's gonna take a lot of work it's gonna take momentum, a momentum shift in order for you to really acquire clients and be successful uh, at, at your business. And it's gonna take time, all right? It's dedication. Um, I would say it takes three to five years to really build a successful business. So um, it takes that long to really figure out and know what you're doing, to be quite honest. So, um, you know, it takes time. So take over a successful firm. I mean, you can always buy a business out, but gaining experience is, there's nothing like gaining experience. Uh, the more experience you have, the more uh, successful you'll possibly be in terms of um, you know, outcomes. So let me go to my next slide here. So an idea is a good opportunity um, if it fills customers' needs, you have the skills and experience and resources to start and grow a scalable business. So it has to be realistic, okay? You have to set realistic expectations and goals when it comes to starting a business, okay? Um, you can't expect you know, everything to happen overnight and things to fall out of the sky. So um, you have to be properly financed, okay? Make sure that you um, take proper planning. You can sell products or services at a reasonable price and still generate a profit. Um, I encourage my clients to get into ser service industry jobs. Um, the service industry really accounts for the largest part of um, economic activity in small businesses, and small businesses are the lifeblood of the United States economy. So service industry, um, has some tremendous advantages. Typically, uh, the service industry is associated with low overhead costs, or you have this fixed cost associated with, um, you know, maybe facilities or things of that nature, but that's really about it. What you kill is what you eat in the service industry. If you market well uh, and you do good business, you'll get referrals. It's slow to come, but once it, it starts, the momentum shift, um, you can be extremely uh, successful in the service industry. So products, they become obsolete, they break, and then that's a reflection of you. Um, even if someone, somebody else designed the product, it's still a reflection on you. So with service, you have the ability to control that a lot more and generate a lot more referrals. So um, the service industry is certainly a very lucrative industry in my opinion. So an idea is, is a good opportunity. Now, let me say this to you. Every good idea doesn't translate into a good opportunity. That's why it's so important for you to uh, craft a business plan okay, to help you organize your thoughts. And we'll talk more about that later on uh, in my lecture. Uh, you can get your products or services to customers before the window of opportunity closes. So a lot of people have great ideas, but you want me to tell you where a lot of great ideas end up at? In the graveyard, because um, there's a lot of people who have these ideas, but they don't want to execute those ideas. They're afraid. They're waiting for a perfect situation to happen. I'm going to do this and that before I start my business. There is no perfect situation. You have to put your stake in the ground, like the moon landing, um, the Apollo landing. They put the stake in the ground. They put the flag in the ground. And you have to put your stake in the ground 
when it comes to starting a business. Like I said, there is no blueprint for success and people come across success at different points. If you look back at the beginning of my presentation, I highlighted some very uber successful entrepreneurs who are uh, for the most part, all billionaires, or uh, at least they have hundreds of millions of dollars. These individuals, they first failed before they succeeded. So um, it's very important to understand how business works. Um, one of the pleasures I've had of being an entrepreneur and also a business consultant is not only, and also a professor is not only um, do I live it, but I breathe it, I eat business. And uh, I've been studying it for a while and I'm getting ready to maybe launch a new business, but it's all based on my research, based on studying what's happening. And that will help you reduce your risk exposure, study, gain knowledge, gain experience in certain areas. Um, you can keep uh, business going and, and make it a sustainable business uh, by doing just that. So successful uh, startup strategies. So I would say, remember, uh, you um, do not need to create a new product or service from scratch. You don't have to reinvent the wheel to be successful. Sometimes it's just a matter of, okay, you see that wheel that's spinning? I'm gonna put some grease on the wheel and make it spin faster. So making some little tweaks uh, to you know certain business models or strategies can help you win uh, a lot better than other people. So um, you know to give you an example, um, you know in terms of business models, um, if you we'll talk more about the future of uh, of business as it relates to technology later on in my presentation. And I think as I continue to do this presentation, I'm going to incorporate more uh, technology components into my uh, step into your startup presentations. But some of the most successful companies did not create new products or services uh, themselves. They just studied what was successful and they were able to replicate it in a way that um, made them uberly successful. I'll give you an example, Chick-fil-A. In my opinion, they don't sell the best chicken. However, um, they have some, um, some religious beliefs and values that the majority of the country identifies with. And that's one of the reasons why they're so successful. Another thing is their customer service is second to none. Their drive-through um, their, their drive model, it doesn't matter how long the line is, how intimidating that line looks, they're gonna clear the line within five to 10 minutes. You're gonna have your order in your hand. And um, they offer impeccable customer service. It defies Logic, it defies the odds when it comes to expectations of fast food restaurants, their service. So they took a model that McDonald's pretty much made, okay, this franchising model, and they perfected it, okay, by offering um, stellar customer service. They always exceed your expectations as it relates to customer service. It never fails me. Even when I go in there and I think, okay, this is the one time I'm about to get disappointed. They find a way to surprise me with impeccable service. And it's consistency in that model. And part of the reason why they're so uh, successful is because the owners operate their stores. Um, so enough about that, but it's just an example of how you don't have to reinvent the wheel to be successful in the industry. So they're one of the top five uh, fast food franchises uh, here in the United States. And um, their model is extremely successful and their stores are always packed with people uh, because of that one little thing. So you don't have to necessarily create a new business model in order to uh, be successful. You don't have to, you know, create a new industry or be so in, uh, innovative. Instead, they brought new strategies or innovations to products, services already existing in the marketplace, good customer service. Um, when you go to fast food restaurants, people don't traditionally think about great customer service. I don't know why this thing keeps doing that to me. But uh, I'll just have to deal with it. Let's see here. Did it go? All right, let's see here. Stop the share. Re engage. Oh, I'm having some. Give me just a second. I think I have too many windows open or something. George, what I'll do, I'll be able to open up the slides and then um, just send me the next slide, okay? Okay, I think, I, um, let's try this 
and see what happens. I think I, I fixed it. My apologies, but I'm not really sure why that keeps happening to me. All right, so uh, successful startup strategies. So um, you have Amazon. Um, they had a Trojan horse. They tricked us all. You thought they were just going to sell books, but Amazon planned on dominating the market and selling pretty much everything in the world, what, what they're doing now. But they're, uh, they had to get their whole business model together. So they started out with books. They started their CR, CRM system, customer relationship management system out with books. They have predictive models to figure out what you like. They recommend products and services to you based on your preferences. They look at your, um, your cookies files and they come up with different things to, to market to you and re-advertise and market to you based on uh, your history. So they have machine learning and artificial intelligence that assists them now. But they started off with books. It took Amazon nine years before they ever turned a profit. So it goes to show you reinvesting in a business really does matter. But who has enough patience to not make a profit for nine years? Jeff Bezos. But now look at what's going on. So when you start a business, it may take time. All right. So if you're starting a business, be in it for the long game. If you're looking for short term sugar rush, you know, gratification or, you know, a sprinkle of money here. Um, entrepreneurship may not be for you. Um, it requires a lot of dedication and consistency. At the Apple, founder, uh, Apple founder Steve Jobs, he was very uh, consistent and dedicated to his craft as well. It's another example of, about um, the industry and how you don't have to necessarily um, be the innovator of the industry in order to uh, be the dominant, dominant player. You don't have to be in what's called a first mover position in order to be the dominant player in the industry. So Apple... They were a little um, small known company known for developing computers, you know, nice computers with different colors and things like that. But they started seeing explosive growth with revenue and sales when they got into the nanotechnology sector. And uh, what they did was they first introduced the MP3 player, which was a sophisticated headphone headset. And they realized that um, if they incorporated the MP3 player into, um, into a phone, that um, this could bring tremendous success uh, in the market. So they also realized that um, there wasn't really any smartphone. So in order to do that, they would have to um, develop a smartphone. Well, there was smartphones out there, but they, was, they were not as smart as the Apple device. So um, there was a smartphone called BlackBerry. And BlackBerry was the dominant player in the uh, nanotechnology smartphone market. Um, how they differ from BlackBerry is only one simple thing. They said, we're going to make a device that gives people a sense of status, a sense of style, because they made it sleek. And we're going to give them a, a phone. But this phone won't have any buttons. So Apple is responsible for making the first um, full touchscreen phone. And that right there uh, is what people in the market want. Study your customers, study your industry. One little tweak in the market can change the entire game. So did they invent the cell phone? No. Did they invent the smartphone? No. But they invented the first fully touch screen phone. And that made them a dominant player in the industry. And it put them in a the first mover position. Uh, and now you've seen uh, companies like uh, Samsung come over and try to eclipse what they've been doing with uh, Android. So it goes to show you don't have to be the first in order to get things done and be successful. Same thing with Nike. Uh, they became uber successful uh, with the endorsements of um, Michael Jordan. Um, but there was other shoe companies already in the market who were dominant players like Reebok, like Adidas. So Nike was able to eclipse them uh, by doing so. Uh, so those are some examples of, uh, of ways, you know, successful startups have implemented strategies to win. And um, you could be that next, that next company. Hey, Zeus, I'm going to need you. <laughs> Uh, it's doing it again. So uh, I'll, I'll take your advice and defer to you on uh, going through my slides. Uh, my apologies, but uh, it just uh, doing that to me again. So. All right, let's see if it, if it lets me this time. All right, yeah. So
So successful startup strategy. Some benefits of following this strategy includes you don't need to uh, invent something new. We kind of talked about that already. As uh, it is an existing market, you can identify competitor weaknesses and market opportunities. So really studying your customer, understanding what they want, um, really will help you understand how to develop a um, go-to-market or penetration strategy that will make you competitive against um, the competition in the market and maybe gain some, some market share. You have to find out what makes you different, what makes you unique, find a problem, uh, solve a problem, okay, fill the void. So um, where do you get started doing most of this stuff? So the key steps is uh, starting up a business, is understanding the market. I can't really stress the importance of uh, understanding the market. Can you all hear me? Hello? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes, you're good. Okay, and you can see me. All right, just want to make sure. All right, so understanding the market is very important. I can't stress that enough. Uh, being able to um, to manage um, your risk by understanding what's going on. Okay, you can't rely on other people to create plans for you if you don't if you're not intricately involved in these plans. If you don't have the knowledge yourself, so well, planning is very important. It's going to help you weather uncertainty. Um, having finances. Most businesses fail, um, startups fail in the first three to five years due to undercapitalization, not having a financial plan. If you don't have a plan, you almost plan to fail. Okay, so um, it's very important to understand that. Business structure considerations. So how your business is structured, uh, are you incorporated the right way? Are you protected properly against liability? Do you have the right partnership with your partners? Um, all these things are very important. Uh, meeting local and state requirements as it relates to permits um, and licensing, very, very important uh, because, you know, it could take your business out if you're not permitted properly, if you're not licensed properly. And um, in business, you are uh, working off of your brand. You're trying to build a brand. And when it comes to brand, think of it as an image, okay? You can go to a new line to get a new job, but what you can't do is go to a new line and get a new reputation, all right? So I'll give you an example um, with Bill Clinton. I mean, when you think about him, do you think about a president who presided over the dot-com era or do you think about other things? Okay. He was very successful economically as our president. Um, but people don't think about that as much. They think about other things that he may have done. So that, that's an example of how you can go to a new line and get a new job, but not to a new line and get a new reputation. Same thing with your business. If your business is not operating legally, your reputation can be tarnished. It could really impact your brand image. So uh, understanding the market is very important. What is the market? The market is um, consumers with unsatisfied wants and needs who have both resources and their willingness to buy. So you need to understand how they buy, how much they buy for, um, you know, what's their um, price point tolerance, what's their preference, what time of the year do they buy, is it monthly, is it weekly? Uh, their buying patterns, understanding that information is very important. And Amazon does a really great job of it with artificial intelligence and ma machine learning. They're able to build predictive models on what people will buy. Soon, I think the entire world will um, have their cookies files visited. Um, when you go to different sites um, via your laptop computer, your desktop, or either your, um, your, your smartphone, um, you give permission um, your, to give up your cookies files. And it's like an iceberg. You think you're giving up information that's at the top of the water, a little small piece, but it's what's below the surface. That big mammoth piece is what you don't see. That's what you're really giving up. And they're able to use that to build predictive models about um, your consumption habits, your buying preferences based on your friends, your network, um, how much money you make, and, and things like that. So, uh, and they advertise these things to you. Sometimes you're talking about those things and they appear on your phone. Uh, five, 10 minutes later. So you think it's random, but it's not. Uh, it's, it's very targeted. So as an entrepreneur, you should set out to fill the uh, market needs by offering top quality and great services at a fair price. What I will say is that if you want to be an entrepreneur and you want to be successful, I would say start out with, I want to be the best. I want to offer the best and do the best and be top notch. Start off with that mentality in mind. If you do, you'll do the best research. You'll work um, at it your best and hopefully um, the results will show. One of the greatest advantages of small business is the ability to know the market and quickly adapt to market needs. So having a plan is, is really important in that respect. Understanding the market. So as noted previously, you can gain uh, direct experience 
um, with the market by working in an existing business or by networking with peers in the industry. Don't worry though. If you cannot follow the path, you can uh, access information um, on the market via uh, market and industry research. So be careful where you um, retrieve your research, but you can extrapolate secondary uh, information that has, um, you know, has value. Um, BLS, the Department of Labor and Bill Statistics, they keep information about um, industries. There's certain websites. We have very powerful research tools, Bid, Minder, and things like that um, here at our institution. And those um, software programs, I mean, each year they cost tens of thousands of dollars. So we do have the resources to help you put together market research data and uh, things of that nature. So that's another reason why you should contact SPDC for your free consultation if you're looking forward to starting a business or if you need help expanding your business. So understanding the market um, as we kind of went over is criti criti critically important. I can't overstate or understate how important that is. As noted previously, you can gain that experience um, and you know experience there's nothing like experience so give me a second here just want to make sure i'm up all right so business plan it's a detailed written statement that describes the nature of the business the uh, target market and the advantages the business will have over competition and the resources uh owners qualifications so listen if you want to go to a bank to get money because you have a business idea, you need to have some experience in that industry or a partner who has experience or else the bank may think twice about giving you the money depending on how much you want. So it has to be realistic goals, things that are achievable, things that um, make sense. So um, one great thing about a business plan is it really forces you to organize your thoughts. Every good idea doesn't translate into a good business opportunity. It doesn't mean it's gonna be profitable. So uh, it's very important to understand how that works. So a business plan forces potential owners to be specific about what they will offer. A business plan is uh, mandatory for uh, talking with bankers and also investors. And to be quite honest, nobody's going to take you serious unless you have a business plan. Okay. If you don't have a plan, it's just some ideas you have in your head. Often I talk to um, people and they just have ideas. I mean, great. Those ideas are going to die with you if you don't write them down. All right. So write them down uh, and you go from ideas to a plan and you go from plan to execution. So uh, essentially, that's what we want to help you do. We do have the resources at our center to assist you with your business plans. Uh, we offer advice. We have um, a business plan specialist. She is extremely awesome. Uh, her name is Alina Matas. Uh, we have people who can help you with access to capital, help you put together your financial uh, tables and charts, your forecasts, things of that nature. So um, having a plan, I can't stress the importance of that. So a good plan is tailored to your specific audience. Sometimes plans, they have to be updated. Your business plan will have the same elements as a Fortune 500 company. Now, I like to use a lean canvas plan. So that's typically a two-page plan. Uh, I like to keep things very simplistic. I mean, sometimes you need a more comprehensive plan depending on what the business uh, is, the type of industry, or the uh, partnerships, or, you know, forecasts, uh, profit models, and things like that. But a good executive summary catches the, uh, the reader's interest and draws them into potential um, potentially to invest. So you want to have something that's attractive, something that's appetizing, something that uh, will draw the eye of investors or also financial institutions. So getting the plan into the right hands is almost as important uh, as getting the right information uh, in it. So you have to make sure you have a great plan and it um, goes to the right people. So um, at SBDC, we can assist you with that. We'd be happy to. So startup costs. Before your business opens, its doors, you will have to pay bills, okay? So the first step should be to calculate the startup expenses. So we have startup expense uh, templates that I typically give my clients along with business plan templates to help them structure and organize their thoughts and kind of start building their plan out, creating a, a pretty good outline. So we, me personally, always encourage my clients to develop an outline before I pass them along to our business plan specialists. I wanna see where their head is at and how much work are they willing to do before I pass them along to her. I don't just refer them to her uh, initially. I wanna see how much work will you do. So uh, it's very important to, to do the work. Um, consistency is also a very important aspect of entrepreneurship. You have to be able to, uh, to be consistent and weather uncertainty. You know, I've had some uncertain times and, and challenges in life and certainly I've uh, found a way to rise to the occasion and, and weather those. And, and that's what really life is all about and also business. So, 
Um, the first step should be to calculate your startup expenses. These will depend on whether your business is a brick and mortar business or an online business. Either way, understanding what your budget is, is gonna be critically important to helping you understand uh, how to plan financially and also strategy-wise for implementing your ideas and execution. So depending on your business category, uh, start a list of uh, key expenses you uh, anticipate, such as office space, equipment, licenses, insurance, salaries, and et cetera. Uh, these things are, are things you can itemize in a uh, startup template. Um, so um, estimate how much these expenses will cost, break them down to uh, one-time expenses and monthly expenses. You should calculate at least one year of uh, monthly expenses by projecting out the, uh, three to five years uh, is even better. So the more you plan, the more probability you have at success. Now, things don't always go as planned. So you can plan as much as you want to, all right? Um, you, unless you test the market or you actually start a business, you don't know how your plan is gonna work, all right? You have a lot of people who have these great plans. They can spend 10 years planning. Why do that? Um, I would just spend a few months or a year or two planning and then I'm ready to execute. So it's very important to understand that, you know, nothing's going to be perfect. There's not going to be a perfect situation. So, but you want to reduce your risk exposure and uh, be successful. There's some people who are overqualified to be entrepreneurs, in my opinion, but they're afraid of the uncertainty or they need like a kick in the, you know, I don't know, um, for lack of better words, to help them jumpstart themselves. They have tremendous potential, but they're afraid. They're afraid of weather and uncertainty and really, Having a plan can give you a lot more confidence in that. Also, um, being properly capitalized, okay? So you don't have to co with your funds. Um, you take money out of your business to pay your personal expenses because you use all your personal money to fund your business, all right? These things are things you should not do in order to start your business. Now, I mean, I, I did it, but I'm not advising you to do it. Um, I think that having a plan and in hindsight, um, you know, being properly capitalized would have certainly um, been to my advantage uh, initially. But uh, I've been able to sustain myself. So sources of capital are, are very important. Now that you've calculated your startup expenses, it's time to consider how you will fund your business venture. So typically you can get money from friends, family, and fools. That's what they call them at least. So for most businesses, bootstrapping is the best way to fund as they re, uh, retain ownership and control over the direction of the business. Um, however, as this method assumes, all of the risks impacts you, your personal finances and can delay retirement if you are not careful. So in order to really be a good business owner, you have to delegate tasks, which means hiring people. And for a lot of small business owners, depending on the level of your business, they want to do it themselves. And it's very important to understand you have to empower other people who can do things on your behalf so you can step away and grow your business, scale it up. So having good people um, is one of the most important things, I think, um, in terms of being successful. Also planning, um, your support system is also, I think, um, very important. So sources of capital, like I said, um, other uh, financing options include you know, family, friends, and those fools who will believe in you because of who you are, um, not because of how awesome your plan is. And it really sucks for them because um, they don't get their money back uh, sometimes. So mission-based lenders, Government agencies, banks, uh, finance companies, crowdfunding, angel investors, venture capital. So if you have interest in learning more about crowdfunding, angel investors, and venture capital, uh, set up a free consultation. We can talk to you about that. But it does require energy, okay, momentum in order to be successful at uh, crowdfunding, crowdfunding and angel investing because it requires marketing, okay, pre-marketing. And you have to get people, you know, that momentum going before you actually, um, you know, release the offerings for, uh, for for funding. So uh, major forms of ownership, sole proprietorship, um, I would say that I would recommend everybody to incorporate. It gives you legal protection against um, risk and liability. You assume extreme liability and risk if you don't incorporate. Partnerships are good to have, but be careful with who your partner is. For all practical and intensive purposes, when you're in business with a person, it's like being in a marriage because your success is tied to that other person. Uh, if they make any faults, uh, they do anything bad, uh, it could impact your bottom line. And depending on how much uh, percentage equity you own, you could be on a hook for liability and be liable for um, just the same amount of equity you own in the business. 
So a corporation is a legal entity which authorizes acts and has liability um, apart from its owners. So the purpose of a corporation is to shield you from liability to issue and collect debt. All right. So um, major forms of ownership, so proprietorship, corporations. Um, so we'll talk more about um, this in our next slide. So the advantages of sole proprietorship, the ease of starting the business and being your own boss, the pride of ownership, leaving a legacy, retention, company profit, um, no special taxes, but there are a lot of downsides. That extreme liability is one that um, you don't really want to have. People can go after you personally if you mess up. That means your house, your car, um, whatever's in your bank account uh, if you screw up. So if you own a business, and you're not properly licensed, let's say you own a food stand and you violate the cottage law because you're making food at home and you don't have any food handling license or anything, but you're a sole proprietor, meaning you haven't even incorporated. And someone gets sick, salmonella poison or something, and now they sue you. Now you're personally liable for uh, the damages. If you did it under a corporation, things may be different. So um, major types of partnerships, you have general partnerships and you have limited partnerships. General partnerships, all owners share in operating the business and is uh, assuming liability for the business debts. And then you have limited partnerships. There may be some partners who are silent partners. All they want to do is invest money. Uh, or They have a limited role in the actual operations of the business, and limited equity as well. So the advantages of partnerships, more financial resources. So it reduces your risk exposure, uh, share management and pool skills, knowledge, uh, longer survival, no special taxes. And you have someone there who um, is like your accountability partner, someone that motivates you, who's riding the ride with you, who's weathering the storm. The disadvantages is unlimited liability, division of profit, difficulty in terminating the partners, and disagreements among partners. Um, you have to be in unison with your partner because you can't really get things done. Um, you know, I've had situations, um, I would say about five or six years ago, where you know I uh, had a client who had a great idea and tried to share it with a friend. And that friend tried to hijack her vision. And when she realized she couldn't hijack the vision, she tried to pigeonhole the actual business from succeeding. She had to, um, she couldn't really make a lot of decisions on her own because she was tied to that, her partnership. And uh, she had to take immediate action to protect herself legally because the financial obligations were extreme. And she had to restart uh, her business by herself. So you have to be careful who you share your vision with. But certainly having a partner will help reduce your risk exposure and give you some support uh, that you probably need to be successful. Um, you know, everybody individually is great, but it sometimes it takes more than one person to make something great happen. So if you're great as an individual, um, you know, it, it, it takes more than two people to, to make something great happen, you know, like a great individual who can uh, be successful in business. So teamwork certainly makes a dream work together everybody achieves more. So having a team uh, can help you um, really weather um, the storm because there's going to be storms. There's going to be ups and downs in business. How you react to those is critically important. And how much support do you have is also going to be important. So the disadvantages of um, corporations, the initial costs, extensive paperwork, double taxation. Uh, you have two tax returns, the size, difficulty of termination, possible conflict with shareholders, and a board of directors. Now, LLC, I have an LLC. It is the most common and most popular form of incorporation at this time, similar to an S corporation, but without the um, eligibility requirements, limited liability companies. Um, you can choose your tax situation. So the flexibility is there, flexibility of ownership rules and flexibility of distribution of profit and losses and operating flexibility. Uh, it provides you uh, a lot of protection but you can't issue stock, therefore ownership is non-transferable and limited lifespan, fewer incentives, tax paperwork. Those are some of the downsides. Um, we can assist you with starting a business. We'd love to help you start a business. I personally would help you start a business if you're interested. I'll incorporate your business for you. I'd be happy to help you with that. Uh, and we do it all for free. So you should first search if your business name is available at sunbiz.org. Um, and then the website also helps um, startup resources, legal forms, startup business regulations, and et cetera. Um, we always encourage people to search for the name to make sure it's not taken or that it was ever used. Even if it was used in the past and it's available, you may not want to use that name because that name could be associated with, um, you know, maybe bad business practices 
Uh, it could be linked to the Better Bureau's Better Business Bureau's website of horrible businesses, but you just incorporate it under that name, unbeknownst to you. So it's very important to do your research uh, before you incorporate. A lot of people are excited to incorporate, so they'll just select their name. They have one in their head already, and they just want to go to the website and um, and, and pay for that name. But do the research. Do due diligence. So also, entrepreneurs should, should uh, utilize the following IRS website. Uh, the website has uh, various tax forms, startup resources, and information on how to obtain an uh, employer number. We can assist you with your EIN numbers, uh, and that is the employment identification number. So starting off the right way, lastly, if you're starting a business in Miami-Dade County, you should refer to the county's website. The website includes business startup assistance, county licensing requirements, and information on potential business incentives. And again, use your resources. We at SVDC would love to help you. Starting a new business, um, if you don't know what you want to do, what kind of business you want to start, um, franchising is certainly a um, is something you should look into. If you have an entrepreneurial spirit, but you don't know what kind of business you want to start. So franchising accounts for roughly about 17% uh, of economic activity in our economy. It's about $3 trillion, and that's about 20% of all jobs um, in our economy. So I think the U.S. invented franchising, and it's safe to say, and it's a very successful business model that we've been able to replicate across um, our country and also uh, across the world. So uh, a franchise is a marketing system involving legal agreements whereby the franchise conducts business according to the terms specified by the franchisor. Okay, so that's what franchising is. You're in business for yourself, but not by yourself. So uh, a franchise or is the party in franchise contract that uh, specifies methods by followed to be followed and terms to be met by other parties. So a franchisee is an entrepreneur who um, power is limited by the contractual agreement with the franchisor. So to give you an example, when you go into a McDonald's, you may think you're inside of a corporate store, but you're actually in a franchisee store. So there's an independent operator for that particular franchise. Same thing with Chick-fil-A. There's independent operators, Burger King. Um, so different franchises, they have individual operators. All you see is the flagship name. All you expect is a standardized process. So if you go and order a number one at McDonald's, you're expecting it to taste the same way here than if you ordered it in Albuquerque, New Mexico or New York City. Um, you want it to taste the same way. So they're known for the standardized business process, a proven, profitable concept. Um, it takes away the guessing game on how to operate a business. If you are a veteran, then you are entitled to additional um, financing under the SBA rules um, in terms of lending, 80% for franchises. So the average person gets about 70, 75%. And uh, so you figure you need about 20 to 25% of whatever the total startup cost is to franchise the business. If you're interested in franchising, I would encourage you to go to entrepreneurship.com. They list of, um, they have a list of 500 franchises and they rank them in order. And it also gives you an idea, a, a snapshot, global snapshot of what the financial commitment is to start a franchise. Typically the biggest hurdle of entry, barrier of entry is the financial aspect of the cost. I would encourage you, if you're interested in franchising, to uh, maybe look at partnership um, if you don't have enough money for the first one. But multi-segment ownership uh, is, is very likely if you're successful. Um, they'll have you build out a territory. You won't have one. You'll have three or four, or maybe even five. And you'll really make a lot of money that way and create generational wealth. So uh, franchise, the privileges conveyed in the franchising contract. Um, so you're, you are restricted to how you can operate. If you don't like to follow rules and directions, franchising is not for you because you have to follow the standardized process that's already been developed and, and already been determined to be successful. You can't get creative and start introducing your own products and services or opening it up at different times of day and night. If you own the Chick-fil-A, you can't be open on Sunday. Even though Sunday is the uh, most profitable day for selling chicken, Chick-fil-A is not open on that day. So, um, you know, it's very important to understand how it works. Um, you can't play by your own rules. Knowing that that is the most expensive day to sell chicken, most profitable day, um, if you're a franchisee, you may want to open up on that day. Well, you can't. So franchising options. Uh, here are some uh, franchising options. I'll just briefly go over this. Product and trademark name franchising. Um, you have business format franchising and master licensing. 
um, multi-unit ownership area developers. You have piggyback uh, franchising, multi-brand franchising, and co-branding. Um, so these are the type of franchising agreements. Life is not about what you get. It's about what you negotiate when it comes to agreements. So make sure you make an agreement that's in your favor. So there are pros and cons to franchising. Some of the advantages are the profitability of success, the proven line of business, pre-qualifications of businesses, the training, okay? You are provided technical assistance by the actual franchisor to help reduce your chances of your business failing. And it, it increases your odds of success because you have a recognized name already, like a McDonald's or Burger King, you're just opening up. Everybody knows what that name is, okay? You have a standardized business process is proven to be profitable, okay? So it takes the guessing game away on how to operate a business and be successful. So if you don't have a great concept, but you have an entrepreneurial spirit, franchising may be the right thing for you. And I happen to be the franchises consultant. Uh, so operating um, businesses, um, you get franchise with A. I can't stress the importance of that. Any franchise you're looking at buying into, make sure they offer great technical assistance. Some franchises, um, they'll tell you, hey, you know, we're going to offer you all this help, and they don't offer you anything. So you want to talk to other franchisees, do due diligence, do your research, make sure it is the right uh, opportunity for you based on the research that you do. So, um, and you can be gotten, you can be had. I almost got into a franchise that um, I determined um, the risk exposure was too high for failure. I'm a business consultant. I specialize in franchising. I studied it at Georgetown, and I almost still sign with them so you have to be careful do your research all right and if it looks too good to be true it probably is so there are limitations with franchising uh the cost the initial franchising fee it can be 25 30 thousand as much as a hundred thousand dollars just for the franchising fee the initial cost of the investment you have royalty fees where you have to pay a certain percentage of uh, your profit back to the actual franchise okay so um it could be Five percent, between five and seven and a half percent, maybe eight percent. All right. Some franchises they take more than that, and that's just too much money. All right. And then you may have uh, ad costs that could be between four to six percent. Overall, you shouldn't pay more than about twelve and a half percent in terms of fees. And they can find ways to nickel and dime you. They may not tell you, hey, this is the royalty fee or the advertisement fee. They may say, hey, we uh, are leasing your equipment. So we're going to charge you a technology fee. We're going to charge you an equipment fee. These are all fees, okay? And it takes away from your, um, you know, your your profit. But in a line item, it doesn't say that it's a, a royalty fee or an advertising fee. They call it a, a equipment leasing fee. I mean, why not just let them buy their own equipment? I mean, their whole goal is to milk them by uh, leasing this stuff to them. A lot of franchises do that. I think that's a pretty shady practice. Now, Every franchising agreement is different and unique because of the economy that we're in and how things are looking. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty. So don't be intimidated by these deals. Don't just accept what people hand you. Negotiate, negotiate. Life is not about what you get. It's about what you negotiate. So you may uh, lose some independence uh, being a franchise, but you're going to gain a lot of profit and a lot of support. Um, now, you, you can have a lack of support as well. Um, you know, if you select the wrong franchise. So make sure your franchise that you select has some brand recognition. It's achieved some type of level of national or regional brand recognition, not just it being a, a good business concept, because it being just a good business concept is all good and dandy. But if people don't know about your brand, then you have a less chance of them wanting to do business with you. So you have to overcome challenges like that. So evaluating opportunities. So select the franchise. Uh, personal observation, I would say um, select a franchise that you believe in, something that you like, um, that you enjoy, and you may have a lot more fun operating that franchising unit. So investigating the potential uh, franchise. So information sources, independent third-party sources. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission governs the rules on franchising, and uh, you have this thing called the Franchising Disclosure Document. It contains all the information inside regarding the franchise typically. Um, associated with your risk exposure, how many franchise units are operated by the company, how many franchise units uh, fail, what are the top 25% uh, percent of franchises doing in terms of numbers? Like, for instance, Wingstop, they're doing about 1.5. Their average restaurant is doing about $1.5 million a year. Um, and the startup costs, 
for one of those is about 400,000. So you need about 20% of that, which will be about $80,000 to get your feet in the door. But you're going to need some money in the bank because, um, you know, you, they're going to want to make sure that um, you have enough money in your personal um, budget to manage your expenses for at least six months to a year. So there's different ways to get into franchising. Uh, every company that calls themselves a franchise is not a franchise, in my opinion, okay? So be careful. Don't get bamboozled. Um, this is Miami. Um, and, you know, give it the consideration it deserves. Also, use your resources. You have expert business consultants with SBDC who can assist you. Uh, we have pretty much, uh, we're like a think tank for business. We uh, have 25 dedicated consultants who specialize in various areas of um, business expertise, access to capital, okay, web development, tech, uh, franchising, um, et cetera, you name it. We have experts, HR, um, we can advise you uh, different things or refer you to some of our resource partners. So there's a great six part uh, startup w um, webinar uh, series on uh, Florida SVDC's website. I would encourage you to check that out. These short videos provide a fundamental overview of what it takes to start a business. And the videos can be accessed through um, the link um, below. And that is at floridasvdc.org slash new business. All right. Additional uh, business resources are here as well. On the business plan, the links, uh, sunbiz.gov, SVA, keep in mind if you're starting a business in Miami-Dade County, you need a business tax license. Um, and regulations from the state are there as well. If you are a foodpreneur, understanding the food cottage laws, the permitting process uh, is very important. Uh, if you want to start a brick and mortar business, I would encourage you to try to find a retail location that already has um, the infrastructure for your business. Like if you want to start a restaurant, one of the hardest things to do is put a grease trap in, in a hood. It's very expensive as well, and it can cause scheduling delays with uh, opening your business. So rather than going through that entire permitting process and construction process, you can identify existing retail locations that already have the infrastructure. It will save you about 30% of time and maybe um, a lot of money. You'll save a dime too. So contact us um, when you need us, which hopefully is now because there's no better time than now to start a business with the economy we have. When the economy um, goes back and becomes successful, you can be as successful as well. You can grow with um, the economy. We love to grow with you. So contact us, 305-779-9230. That's our number. Or you can visit our website at SBDC, uh, SBDC at FIU.edu. Um, and that is the, concludes my presentation. Um, and I'll take questions at this time. Thank okay. you so much, Jesus, and All everybody right. else for participating. All right, George, um, I have a few questions. Sure. Um, one of the questions is uh, how to locate and apply for grants and, uh -huh. uh, and how to start a business with no money or how to find investors. How to locate, how to and locate apply for grants. grants. Okay, so the SBA right now has a grant for people who are socially disadvantaged, uh, economically, uh, geographic areas. They're offering $10,000 for people who did not receive more than 10, less than $10,000 in PPP money. You are eligible for grants. I personally don't like grants that much because um, the ministering process for grants, the reporting could be cumbersome and it can make, take more time to get a grant or, you know, kind of uh, to get it administered to you than it would to just go get you a loan or save up the money yourself. But uh, there are some grants available uh, through the city of Miami and also Miami-Dade County for small businesses that have been economically impacted by, um, by um, Corona. And also if you demonstrated, if you already received PVP, if you demonstrated a loss of more than 30% in business revenue um, over one quarter or over the entire year last year, you're eligible for a second draw of PPP funds. Uh, and the second part of that question was how do you start a business with no money? Do your research, you can find out how to do it. I started a business with just 50 bucks and um, I, I'm, I've been uber tremendously successful with the business. I started off with 50 bucks. I, uh, I think the 50 bucks was $25 for a Magic Jack number. And I still have that Magic Jack number, by the way. And uh, 25 bucks uh, for my business cards. But, um, you know, I'm a professional hustler. So that's, that's kind of like how I was able to do that. Um, you have to do your research, though, uh, and, and figure out what kind of industries can you get into and be successful with. Um, and it doesn't take, you know, the most 
uh, creative mind or um, I think a revolutionary idea to, to really be successful in business. Get into the service sector, pick a business and be successful. It can be something as simple as being a locksmith, okay? Um, I'm not a locksmith, but I, I'm just like flabbergasted at how much money they make. So um, I had a situation about eight months ago where I got locked out. I needed a locksmith. The guy opened the lock up in less than two minutes. But because it was after midnight, he charged me $125. It's an example of how, you know, uh, um, low-skill trade can, can give you funds. He told me he had 10 calls that same night. So the guy, he made well over, you know, 1500 bucks and, uh, you know, 1250 bucks in, in one night. So it's an example of how you can start a, you know, a business at a low cost. I'm sure it doesn't cost a lot of money to learn how to become a locksmith and get your license. Once you have the, that, all you need is your business cards and uh, do some digital marketing. Um, I have another question. So, My biggest, um, I, um, I have another question. My biggest question is um, when thinking about, my startup is where to start. Is it the business plan? And then what? The building, the staff, the legal, the, the legality of the business. Where is step one of starting up the business? I would say it all starts with your plan. Uh, if you don't have a plan, you plan to fail. Your plan is gonna help you uh, organize your thoughts and also help you do research. There's gonna be critical aspects of your plan that you may not have detailed information about or that you may not be too knowledgeable about. And that's where you have to do more research than ever. In addition to that, that's probably where you need expert advice from a business consultant with uh, the Small Business Development Center at FIU. And that's where we come into play and we love to help you. Um, now, this is a startup slash uh, marketing slash business development. Um, obviously, during the challenging time right now during COVID, um, how can um, small businesses and startups can uh, circumvent um, to get into the right people? Well, digital marketing is very important right now because we are experiencing uh, a lot of social distancing. Uh, digital marketing is very important, attending webinar events. And um, just like you would pay money to um, be in a retail space, you have to pay that same level of money, the same amount of money uh, in digital marketing to really have impression. And it's not just um, marketing, but effective marketing. Okay, who are you targeting? Do you know your customer? Do you know what they value? Do you know how to appeal to them? This is all important. Understanding your customer, designing your marketing from a customer um, service centric perspective, um, not how to identify with them will yield you more success. People typically buy from people they know like a trust. So building credibility, building trust and getting referrals uh, is also uh, great ways to, uh, to, to build your business and sales during this challenging time. Perfect. And then uh, one of the last questions is, uh, what do you think of a one page of business model canvas um, through the, the lean startup, uh, so just for startups and self a business plan. Yes, I think the one page business model lean canvas is, is a, it's an excellent idea. I go with the two page business plans, a little more detail, but having, um, you know, your executive summary, having your, um, your plan detail, um, it's, it's very important. And also having your numbers together, your forecast. So it may take more than one page to do that, but I like to keep things very simplistic. I feel like if you, if you can't, explain it in a very simplistic and condensed form if it's too complicated for me to understand like shark tank says i'm out like because um i think it needs to be kind of straightforward it needs to convey a message of simplicity so uh, the investors financial institutions friends families and fools they'll all get the information in a very uh, meaningful way and compels them to want to invest so i would say uh, when it comes to your business plan put a lot of heavy emphasis on your market research data your executive summary, and also your financial forecast. The bank's going to look at your executive summary and also your financial forecast first. And then they're going to, uh, if they have further interest, they'll uh, dig and they'll dive deeper into that. As a business consultant, I'll say I'm very pessimistic. As our financial institutions, when people present business plans to us, we're not negative people. We're thinking about the worst that can happen instead of the best because we're thinking about risk exposure. So we have to fit, find ways to compel the person who's reading the business plan to understand that this could work, this can be successful. So you need to be able to demonstrate um, the, your command and knowledge of the actual market, of the actual customer, the targeted customer, and your go-to-market strategy. How are you gonna execute? So um, and your market research information certainly uh, lends support to that in terms of uh, understanding how the market, when you can demonstrate how the market works and um, 
it, it gives people more confidence that you'll be profitable as investors. Perfect. Um, yeah, uh, we don't have any other questions, but if there's any other additional questions, um, don't hesitate. Um, shoot myself an email um, um, or pretty much email us at our, at our website at sbdc at fiu.edu and I'll be able to answer it and also afford it to George as well. Um, but um, if there's any questions, uh, don't hesitate. Um, just give us a call. We're here to assist you. Um, the, the, web, the, the presentation has been emailed um, via the link. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, we're here to assist you and to have one last question for you, George. Sure, absolutely. I'm, okay. I'm happy to answer any questions they yeah. have. Uh, yes, yeah, so we will be um, um, providing you the, um, the, the PowerPoint presentation um, that has been, that Brianna has provided the link. And um, that's it. So, yes. Um, so I just want to say thank, thank you so much, Jesus and Brianna, for putting on this uh, webinar. There's a lot of hard work that goes into making these events successful. I just show up and present, and they're literally doing uh, all of the hard uh, work that goes into this right here. So thank you so much on behalf of uh, our team and also uh, everybody who's on the webinar. And if I can be of assistance to any of you all who've uh, been viewing this webinar, please reach out to SVBC, sign up for a free consultation. Uh, it's fast, it's free to sign up. Go to uh, contact us and uh, request a free consultation. And once your information, it goes through our uh, registration queue Jesus will forward it over and assign it to, to myself or a consultant who may uh, uh, specialize in the area that you need help in. We're all here to help you, and I just want to um, wish you good luck on your business and challenge you to get out there and start your business. Don't wait for things to be perfect. Start now, and it starts with a plan. Thank you so much, Jesus. All right. All right. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. All right. Bye.